I'm your host, Carrie Kay, and today we have Matt from Preoccupations. Hello, Matt. Hello, hello. Formerly of Viet Cong fame. Um, yeah, or in fame. I don't know, is that a thing you can say? So when did you know that you had to change your name from Viet Cong? Um, when we started getting shows canceled or, um, I guess, less interest in booking us, specifically because of the name. Really? Which happened, I guess, early last year, as soon as that self-titled Viet Cong record came out, there was a bit of a backlash in the booking of things. Um, and we kind of knew that we were going to change the name for the next record anyways at that point, so it was kind of always in the back of our minds. Was there any resistance within the band about changing the name from Viet Cong, or were you guys all pretty much on board? There was, but from from the people that um, the people in the band that don't ever have to talk to uh, <laughs> journalists. <laughs> <laughs> what was the process like choosing a new name, and how did you guys end up with preoccupation? Um, it was slightly arduous. I mean, choosing a band name in the first stages of being a band, it's pretty easy because there's no uh, no context really, I guess. Like slight. Yeah. Tabla rasa. Yeah, but we were under some public scrutiny, <laughs> so we had to put a little bit more thought into it, and it took us forever. Um, and it turns out that most good band names that you think of have already been taken. It's like a you know, you think of something and it's a, turns out it was a one-hit wonder doo-wop band from uh. 1958 or something, and it's all been taken, and again, because we were under such public scrutiny, um, we had to make sure it was something that wasn't taken, and it took us forever. Um, it was basically by default that we ended up calling it preoccupations. Um, it was one of the few on our final list, I guess, that hadn't been taken already, so. <laughs> Anxiety. How did women end and preoccupations begin? Um, women was long enough ago that I don't, I don't really remember. Um, I was in that band with my brother. Um, and. Mike Wallace, who's playing drums, who also plays drums in this band, and our buddy Chris, who's since passed away. Um, I think Sorry. we were just, oh, it's one of those things. Um, one of those inevitable things. Mm. But we were just bored and living in Calgary, Alberta. Um, it was the winter and we had nothing to do whatsoever. So I think my brother had a few songs and we kind of just started getting together and recording them on our own and going from there. Um, I think that was the genesis of that band, and then that band kind of fell apart in a, again, in a public arena. Seems to be a theme. <laughs> can't wait till this one falls apart in a really public place. Could be tonight. Be right here on Dirty Laundry. Could be right here. Those guys are going to be trying to get into the green room. Ah, that'll be it. What's the reaction to this new album as opposed to the previous one in general? Um, it's been, it's been really good so far. Um, we just started touring it. I don't really read reviews or anything because I think that's a bad idea as a creative human. Yeah, maybe so. Um, so the only gauge I have really is by playing the songs live and judging um, people's reaction to that. But it's been great so far. What's your favorite David Cronenberg movie? Mm. I just watched History of Violence. It was on TV at one of the hotels we were in a few days ago. It's not my favorite, but it's got the best naked jump kick scene <laughs> in movie history. At least in the top five naked jump kick, kick scenes in movie history. Um, it's just so flopping great. around. And, <laughs> and then he stabs a guy in the eyeball. It's one of the most intense action sequences I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. um, but if I had to choose one, between The Fly and Videodrome, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say The Fly, though. Gold Boom. Yeah. That's mine. Although, uh, Videodrome's got Blondie, so I don't know. 
someone sent us a video of these little dudes, preteens from some small town, I think it was Tyler, Texas, um, and they were covering one of our songs. Uh, the mm-hmm. song was Death, which is a pretty ambitious song. It's like a 12 minute long, crazy, kind of proggy punk thing. And they covered it pretty well, we saw this video. So we tracked them down on Facebook and we're like, hey, we're rolling through Texas in a couple weeks. Uh, you guys need to come open up for us. They're called Sewerville. Sewerville. The drummer's literally 11 years old, I think, and the other, I think the other dudes were 13 or 14. I could be wrong on those Aww. ages. They were young Aww. dudes, though. That's like the age that I teach. Yeah. I love that age. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so we got a hold of them, they're like, oh, we can't do Dallas because we've got drum core tests or something like that. Like, <laughs> their priorities straight, you know? I love it. But they ended up coming to play um, in Austin. They opened up for us at the Mohawk. And it was awesome, and their parents came, they had to be there to chaperone them, and they brought us cake, and they were super pumped, and it made me, uh, made me feel really good and happy. <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> so that's the only wholesome thing that we will ever do on tour, probably, but it was nice. They were pumped. 